New model agreement on this Sunday. Believe it or not, the European caving to the GFS. Here's where you are in the upper levels. We're going to talk about that and what that means for those of you in the east. Some colder weather moving through the Great Lakes down into the south today. This isn't going to last long. It's going to be pretty progressive. It's going to move out fairly quickly while we warm up across the west. The story out here is going to be way above average temperatures as this trough gets established in the eastern United States this week, setting us up for more than one chance for snow, maybe two, some of you maybe even three or four. I'll show you what I mean. Here's where we are right now. Again, heading into Tuesday and Wednesday. This is the start of what's happening. We're going to look at these two pieces of energy that I think are critical to what happens Thursday into Friday. We're getting really close now, right? It's Sunday, so we're talking about something that would be happening as we head toward the end of the week. Cold air showing up on the European, diving way to the south, and does this set us up for maybe a second blast of cold air and for something else to develop as we head into Sunday and Monday? I think there's some questions today about that. And then some pretty chilly air works right along the northern U United States border as we head into next week. Still a long way to go, but we've got some pretty cold air just to the north across Canada. More on that uh, as we get closer. That's just really far out. An overnight run of the GFS. I just want to show you the operational snow run. This isn't a winner for New York City by any stretch or the mid-Atlantic. I want to let this run out because... Look what the GFS does. It says there's not just one chance of snow here. We're looking at maybe another one as we head into next week, but it doesn't look nearly as strong as it did yesterday. But what we saw last night with the European, uh, it started to cave more to what the GFS was showing yesterday. This puts a heavy snow into West Virginia. Some decent snow also back here across the Midwest as the upper low swings through. And then heading into next week, man, the GF or the European is trying to do something really wild. So, more to come on that. Let me show you the pieces of energy that we are watching as we head into this week. We're going to specifically track what's happening heading into Wednesday and Thursday. First, you got this piece of energy that's dropping in from the upper Midwest. That's going to put some snow down here, at least bring some reinforcing cold. One, two, three pieces of energy that we're watching to come together. Now, here's the interesting part that I think has got to be watched. You've got this upper low right along the Rio Grande. How strong will this be? How fast will this progress across the south? Because if this piece of energy outruns what's happening back here, you're not going to see this upper level piece of energy dig to the south. Because watch what happens. As this comes south, it starts to interact with this. And what does it do? It tugs it further south. And the more you can tug it, boom, the more negatively tilted this thing goes, now you're looking at, well, I don't know, that might be a little aggressive. There we go. Now you're looking at something aggressive in the upper levels that could put down one heck of a storm, possibly for the mid-Atlantic. More to come. I'll be tracking it with every update, and another update will be coming out Sunday evening. This will be the Sunday first update. This is the potential for seeing more than an inch of snow. If you were to go back to yesterday's GF, or European and look, looked a little different, a lot different. Uh, a lot, I would say maybe a lot drier or a lot lower chances for seeing that snow. So definitely today the trend has been for more snow and we're starting to look at the 50 members of the ensembles. The cotton candy color is starting to grow for the east. Across the west, you talk about anomalous. And by the way, we're coming back to the east so I just want to let you, you friends across the west know I, I'm not forgetting about you. It's just, where's winter here? Not this week. My gracious, look at the snow chances through next Sunday. I, I mean, outside of parts of Washington and British Columbia, nothing out here right now. I get it. People are frustrated about winter across the West. It just doesn't look very hopeful for you if you're looking for snow in the next seven days or so or any kind of precipitation for that matter as this huge ridge starts to dominate across the western United States. Here's where, we're, we're, where we are on this Sunday. Cold air rushing into the east. That's going to keep snow showers going into the mountains here into Pennsylvania, western New York. We'll see some lake effect snow here, too. It'll be really breezy, too, on this side. High pressure settling into the mid-south, also into the deep south, and across uh, the Gulf Coast. We'll start, we'll start to see things get cool, but we're also going to dry out behind what we saw yesterday. A lot of rain, a lot of storms, too. Now, here's where we start to watch our players. We've got some snow and wind and rain across the Pacific Northwest, but here comes our first piece of energy diving in from the Canadian prairies. We're also watching, again, that upper low that's spinning across Texas. That's going to put some showers back here. Otherwise, I mean, if you look at this map, 
I mean, relatively tranquil. This will put a little bit of snow, though, down, I think. I'm backing it up just a little bit across parts of Manitoba, northern Minnesota, into the Arrowhead. That looks to be the heaviest. And then this is the front, right? You're going to start to cool down. Temperatures go back down below average. And now we're watching what happens on the southern side of this system. High pressure setting up across the prairies, pushing that cold air down. This could also, by the way, put some decent snow here into Wisconsin, into um, Minnesota. I don't know how far into Minnesota it actually gets, but definitely into Wisconsin, Michigan, into Indiana and Illinois. Now we're watching for this to develop. It's much more negatively tilted today on the overnight runs, and that starts to give the idea that there could be some heavy snow into East Tennessee, Kentucky, the mountains of Southwest Virginia, West Virginia. That's an impressive run here, but for the cities, you know, again, this is one operational model run. Let's see how this goes. These upper lows are always tricky. That is a super negatively tilted trough, but the surface low tries to outrun things, but that puts snow here into Virginia, into Maryland, in my opinion, D.C., maybe even New Jersey still at, at, at play here. Beyond this, the European kind of wants to squelch things. It really tried to get things going yesterday, but we're really long range. Let's get through this first storm first, folks, and then we'll narrow it down. This is the GFS from uh, early morning. Let's go back to the overnight run. This would be the midnight run. Look at the comparison here. I mean, it's pretty close to what the European is showing. Although the GFS tries to put a little more snow up along the northeast coast as low pressure develops. So we've seen, I don't want to say a unicorn today, but we've seen the European cave to the GFS. I get criticized sometimes for showing the GFS on this channel. Who's going to cave back? Maybe the European wins by tomorrow. We see things flip and I get it. If you're the, fo the, the type of person that says, will these change tomorrow? Absolutely. We're looking at operational model runs at this point. To be honest, I mean, and not that I would be honest. It sounds like everything I've said at this point is a lie. One thing I do promise on this channel, I will be honest with you. And it may not be what you want to hear, but I'll tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing more cotton candy on the ensemble runs. And that's what I like to look at. I like to look at the ensemble runs, which use more than 50 members, and see where confidence and percentages and the chances start to grow. These chances are not even that high here yet, guys. So look, you're still looking at like a 20 to 30% chance for places like Richmond of seeing more than an inch of snow. So it's not off the charts yet. We're just not seeing that agreement. But when you start to see those operational runs, those single individual runs show big storms, you start to pay attention. This is the AI, the artificial intelligence version of the European. The jury's still out, in my opinion, on how accurate this is. But it also, it's not quite as strong, but it tilts the trough negatively as it gets into the northeast. So this would put more of a snow, I think, into the northeast. More to come. Clearly, still a lot of questions out there but you you got to agree that today things are lining up more than yesterday and that's what you'll see as time goes forward as we end up narrowing this down here's the snow you're going to see over the next 24 hours or so i want to show you the blended model data through this time as well into the mountains of west virginia downwind of the lake some snow here and then the reason you don't see the big snow on the, this, this is the blended model data the national uh, model blend it takes multiple models and throws it all together it's because the agreement just isn't there. And I'll be, you know, to, till you get down to the to the storm, that usually doesn't show as much. And that's a great tool, by the way, for forecasting within 24 to 48 hours of a snowfall event. Here's what the European is showing through Friday across the prairies. Again, not as much snow across Alberta, Saskatchewan, down into the northern Rockies. I mean, look how snowless it is out here. But boy, these systems diving in from the northwest could put some decent snow here into parts of Ontario. You know, places like Winnipeg, you're going to be right on that border as these clippers swing through. So a couple of systems over the next week or so. Temperatures on the way down today likely falling in many areas all the way down to the Gulf Coast. And as we get into tomorrow morning, we'll be down into the 30s across north Florida. Heading into tomorrow, much cooler across this region, down into the 40s. We'll start to see some rebounding as we head into Tuesday especially back here across Missouri and down into Mississippi. We're back up into the 50s. Here comes the cold, though. You'll feel it first across the upper Midwest. Even if you don't get the snow here, you're back into the cold Arctic air mass. That's driving south. And then this is where your interesting weather is going to start to take shape, right? Across the south and up toward the mid-Atlantic. 
How much warm air can we snug around the coast? Again, that's probably why you're looking at more of a rain event across the far coast uh, of Carolina and Virginia down into South Carolina. And that's North Carolina. I just said Carolina as if, as if, as if it's one state. I understand. Okay. Uh, yeah. So more cold on the way here. It could get downright chilly. And then heading into next week, watch this time frame as well. Further to the west, warm day today. I just went really quickly through today, but 50s, almost 60 as far north as South Dakota. Heading into tomorrow, I want to let this go because it could be even warmer. Again, mid-50s up across Montana and then across the west. The warmth continues here. We're going to watch it get even warmer, especially right here along the Pacific Northwest coast. The 50s, close to 60, start to spread north here into eastern Washington, Oregon, and right here into Portland. I mean, highs close to 50. It may get even warmer as we head into Tuesday. We may be pushing 60 for Seattle with much warmer weather back here. All right, that's your live update. That's what I'm looking at. Again, these operational model runs will change, I promise you, but it's very interesting to see where the snow is today on the European, also the GFS. We're certainly seeing... Uh, a lot of things to watch. I'll be back with an update later. Let's see what these midday model runs do. See you later. Have a great day.